Hello, good evening and welcome back once again to In The Know, brought to you by The Racing Post and sponsored by Coral. And here we are once again in the studio, ready and raring to go for a National Hunt Festival. Uh, we've uh, got Cheltenham behind us, of course. It is three days in Liverpool uh, with the National, of course, the feature uh, of the uh, the week, uh, the month, the year. Uh, depending on whether you uh, uh, find the winner or own the winner or train or ride the winner, maybe the feature of your entire lives uh, but uh, we'll hopefully find some winners along the way as well and we've got uh, some cracking action to kick off tomorrow with four grade ones uh, starting us off with a bang so uh, welcome welcome to the show it is live and interactive of course so if you're watching on youtube and facebook make sure you like that stream and subscribe if you're watching on youtube as well uh, but like i said we've got four grade ones to uh, to kick off uh, for uh, for tomorrow so we'll be uh, getting stuck into those uh, we've got a red uh, hot uh, uh, bowl to, to look forward to, of course, a couple of uh, classy juveniles going head-to-head -head as uh, well. Uh, the best of the rest behind Honeysuckle uh, from the Champion Hurdle and the Manifesto Novices Chase, which might not be the best uh, event uh, we've, uh, we've ever seen, but there still has to be a decent winner, and we might find a decent price winner to boot as well. Uh, so, uh, like I said, we've got the chat box open in front of me as well, so if you want to get in touch with your thoughts and feelings and selections, then please do throughout the evening. And uh, after a, a week's holiday... I am vaguely fresh and raring to go as we get stuck into Aintree. Uh, but I said I wouldn't come back into the studio uh, if my demands weren't met. And uh, my demand, of course, was to be joined once again by Mr. Paul Keeley. Uh, and luckily, here he is. What um, on Paul. earth for? Sorry? <laughs> what on earth for? What on earth for? Well, it just wasn't the same without you, mate. It wasn't uh, the same well, without you. You were, a, you, were, you, were, you were a morning man for I Cheltenham. I was a morning man for Cheltenham, yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I almost mirrored exactly my performance at the previous year, not tipping a winner until the very last race, but at least I had loads of places and actually made a few quid this time. Yeah. But yeah, it was a fantastic, it was a fantastic festival. It was one of those I felt that like was one of the, the, you know, the ones that got away. Too many of them, just missed, just yeah. missed all the time. But yeah, but you were rattling the crossbar. Yeah, with yeah, yeah, just one after the other. I had four seconds in a row in the handicaps until Banbridge uh, won the Martin Pipe. I'd had the second in the previous four handicaps, which was rather frustrating. But you know, it was a good week. Yeah, and uh, you're back for more. I mean, of course, last year, if it does echo last year, you took the last winner uh, at, uh, at Cheltenham, and you started off entry with a uh, with, the, with the first winner. So. Is that going to repeat? Uh, I hope so. I mean, I haven't got a really massively strong fancy in the first race, it has to be said. There's a few later on, that I prefer, a few other races later on that I prefer for betting mediums. Okay, but um, I've seen you getting getting stuck in outside, so mm. you're pretty. Oh, I'm tucking into Friday at the moment. Aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, but it is. Um, you, but just trying to remember what day it is is uh, is half the uh, the problem uh, when you're when you're previewing these uh, at these festivals. Uh, trying to remember what day it is uh, in general for Tom Siegel's a problem. He, he never leaves that room. Have you looked outside, Tom? <laughs> Look at me with my white face compared to you two with your tans. <laughs> my God, I wish I was paid what you guys were. Well, I mean, I was uh, I was sat in an all inclusive hotel trying. Uh, uh, you know, trying to uh, to get on with my family for a week, whereas Keels was uh, was winning at golf apparently. So, what have you been up to? Uh, working most of the time, yeah. Sit, sat in this office working, doing my trying to earn some money. So maybe in a couple of weeks' time, I can sit in sit in the sun somewhere. Well, uh, it's, 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 it's a tough life, Tom. It is a tough life. <laughs> what do you uh, what do you think of Aintree this week? Uh, Aintree is not my favourite, to be honest. I think it's an absolutely brilliant meeting, but it's not a, not a meeting I tend to do very well at. I don't know why. Uh, it just gets to sort of in the, one of those type of meetings where you don't know whether to go with the Cheltenham form or not. I've got an absolute shocking record since they've uh, since they've done, uh, changed the fences over the national course. I have literally no idea how to find a winner over the national fences, but we'll try. You know, no, I'll keep on trying and I'll keep bashing away and hopefully this week will be good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, you can't keep a good man down, Tom, and uh, and uh, and you are a good man. Well, thank you very much, Ron. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to bat back, bat back your uh, your barbs and insults with uh, with compliments and see how you <laughs> cope with those. Thank you very much. Um, Paul Keelian and, uh, and Tom Siegel on uh, tipping duties and uh, we are also joined by uh, Coral representative David Stevens, who uh, the last time I uh, saw you David uh, you were getting stung by a wasp so uh, have you have you recovered? Good evening Ross, good evening gents, yeah that caused much merriment amongst not just the viewers of this but my friends and family, they all really enjoy me getting stung uh, I have recovered from that, since been up to air, of course, for the Coral Scottish Grand National. Keels knows that that's a brilliant weekend, and I think we're in for a brilliant three days up here. Cheltenham, as Keels says, was fantastic. 
great to get the crowds back again. It's a similar story up here. And it's incredible to think, really, that, that obviously building up to Saturday and the big race, and it'll be the first time in three years that betting shops will be open for a Grand National. So that's a massive day for all the shop colleagues out there. So building up towards that. But some terrific racing over the next two days. And I love the fact that even when Kills doesn't really fancy anything, he's already getting stuck into racing in two days' time. That's a sort of... The sort of man I aspire to be. Yeah, the, uh, the, there's, there's fancy and stuff, and then there's fancy and stuff like Paul <laughs> Keeley, isn't there? There's, uh, there's a very, uh, very different uh, uh, set of uh, circumstances. Where's the, uh, where's the money been going, uh, anti post for the big race or other races, David? Is there, is there plenty flying around already? There really is, and it's, well, I'll say one word, two words, Snow Leopardess. Uh, she has been all the rage this week, and I can see it continuing because she's exactly the sort of profile that. The, the, they call them once-a-year punters because fundamentally that's what they are. They'll come out on Saturday, they'll read their newspapers, they'll see three ones by her name. She's a, a grey, she's got this brilliant backstory for a horse, if a horse can have a brilliant backstory and that she's already uh, given birth to a foal. Uh, she's won over the big fences and she's got a brilliant name. And it may sound a silly thing to say, but Tiger Roll, half the reason why Tiger Roll was always so popular was his name with, with the once-a-year punters. And Snow Leopardess is exactly that. And Enjoy Dalen, forget it may have a brilliant chance, but won't be backed on the day by the public because of the name. So, yeah, it's building up to, to a brilliant... It is, it's my favourite day of the year in this business because it is the one day when the wider public actually care about what we do. Yeah, absolutely, David. Uh, yeah, uh, whereas uh, 364 of them, uh, quite frankly, they uh, they couldn't give a monkeys, could they? Uh, but uh, but we enjoy it, and everyone watching at home and uh, and getting involved uh, enjoys it as well. So, like I said, get in touch with your uh, your thoughts and feelings and your selections on that live chat. So before we get stuck in, uh, we've got another offer for you for the Racing Post Members Club: 30% off your first year. Uh, that is the uh, the uh, the cost of your first year, of course. We're not going to take three months off your life. Uh, uh, subscribe today for the Racing Post Members Club and get involved. Uh, 244 quid for your first year for the uh, the tips, for the the replays, uh, and exclusive uh, 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 stories and uh, uh, investigations as well. So get in touch with the uh, the Members Club here for the uh, the Racing Post. But uh, we've got entry to talk about, so uh, let's kick off with the first of four Grade Ones. Uh, on on Thursday afternoon, uh, and like I said, the, the Manifesto Novices Chase will be the the first one uh, uh, for us to uh, to look at tomorrow at uh, at Aintree. Just waiting for the uh, patiently for those uh, prices to come up. There we go, lovely stuff. We've already lost one. Jackamar uh, does not go. Would have been the outsider of the field for Milton Harris, uh, but we're left with Warlord at nine to four, Pick Dorhy at five to two, Gin on Lime at nine to two, Earn River at nine to two, Miller's Bank at fifteen to two and the Widowmaker at 25 to 1. So just the six of them lining up uh, for tomorrow's uh, Manifesto and Novices Chase. And uh, in terms of uh, uh, ratings, it's a fairly uh, modest affair. I mean, we've only got one horse rated over 150, which is uh, uh, pretty poor stuff, really, for a, a Grade 1 Novices Chase. Uh, but it does mean that uh, potentially it is completely wide open, uh, Keels. But in terms of overall quality, it's not quite top level. Yeah, I mean, sometimes this race, you know, sometimes many of the Yangtze races don't have the, the absolute quality that you get at Cheltenham, but they're still interesting enough, and they're, they're, they're decent enough horses. There were some unexposed ones. One in particular that, uh, that I, I almost, I tried to tempt myself into tipping was Earn River uh, for Nick Kent. Now, he's, he's won his last four starts, uh, the last two over fences, and he hasn't really been tested, but I just kept watching back and back and back, and I just thought, you know what, he did half jump low. Mm. And that worries me around Aintree, because they're probably still the stiffest park fences in Britain. Uh, and if he manages to clip one of them, uh, it, it would worry me. So I ended up going down the safe route and thinking, well, Pick Dory is the highest rated horse in the race. He has fallen himself at Newbury earlier in the season, but he's been pretty foot perfect since then. Um, He'll probably be in front, set his own set his own gallop. Uh, you know, he's five pound better off with uh, Miller's Bank for the length he beat him at Kempton last time. I think he's I think he's the one to beat. He's drifted out to you know he's drifted out a full point from from an yeah. opening five to two. Now, so so uh, uh, I think he's uh, I think he's a decent price now. So uh, um, that would be the one for me. Yeah, I guess in these races, like you said, when you're looking at it and thinking, oh, this is uh, this is below its usual quality, mm. it can be. It, it, sometimes yeah. you, just having the obvious, well, this is clearly thing, the best. There's one thing we'll point play. out before we get right stuck in is I just had a look at the weather, yeah, uh, and it's now forecast to bucket down, right? Okay, and we have a wind warning with gusts of up to well late 50s miles an hour, dropping to the, you know, 35, 40 mile an hour during racing. 
Mm. Uh, you know what I mean? So it's going to be it's going to end up quite a test for the horses anyway. Just just once, I would like to do this show without having to <laughs> to work out what it's going to do mm. between now yeah, and the start. Absolutely. Of the race. Well, I just thought I'd have a look and see what it does, and it now seems like it's going to rain pretty much all day from the from from the night time onwards. So yeah, uh, it'd be interesting to see. Yeah, okay, there we go. A bit like the Wednesday at Cheltenham. Yeah, well, yeah, or, or half of Royal Ascot or every other meeting yeah, we exactly, seemingly yeah. uh, preview, Tom. <laughs> uh, yeah, half the time it's uh, it's form study, the other time it's uh, refreshing the uh, the Met Office website uh, for uh, for racing previews. But um, uh, Pick Jawhey, the safe play for uh, for Paul Keeley. Um, what did you make of this uh, this contest? Again, a, a smallish field, not necessarily the, uh, the best renewal of this contest uh, we've seen, but did anything stand out as a potential improver? Yeah, I mean, I'm willing to take a chance on Earn River. I know Keels is worried about his jumping. I'm not really. He can be a bit low, of of course, but uh, but uh, I think he'll be fine. He, he was good round Weatherby. I think the form's better than people think. I liked his run at uh, Doncaster 2, the horse he beat there, Big Stan, when and won the, the handicap at Aintree, uh, or, uh, Aintree uh, Air or last weekend. And so, uh, for me, it's all about Earn River. I think he's got Group One, Grade One potential, while the others might not have. I think he'll improve past this lot, and I think he'll win. Yeah, he. Um, yes, but again, you're a speed figure man, Tom. He's been putting in very good um, numbers for uh, for winning what a, a fairly modest races, I guess. But uh, yeah, and an, an RPR of one five four last time out for winning a a bit of a a, a bit of a hack canter. Um, what's his uh, What's his danger? Uh, are you, you said you're not worried about the um, his jumping. Miller's back. No, not really. I mean, look, you can. I, I can't get into that sort of stuff. Yeah. You know, if, if I did that, I'd be, you know, imagine going through the Grand National worried about horses. I can't. I, I think he's a fair enough price at nine to do on what he did at Weatherby last time. He might fall over. Any of these might fall over. Every horse falls over. Corto Star fell over. You know what I mean? So if uh, I, I get Kiels' concerns, but I thought at nine to two, he was a very reasonable price. I thought Miller's Bank, who's run well here before and might turn the tables on Pick Dory, might be the biggest danger tempted to uh to stick him in as well at seven to one but uh didn't really fancy warlord or gin online if truth be told and so i thought it was quite a good quite a good betting race and i liked uh earn river yeah Earn river then nine to uh, to two for, for nick kent and charlie hammond who's uh, uh, unbeaten in uh, in four starts over hurdles and fences uh, handicap on his ultimate start novice chase last time out and is up with the the big boys uh, here today and they will be uh, pretty thrilled with a uh, with a, 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 a lesser than normal turnout. Uh, if you are, are the the Kent connections, um, just a quick word on Warlord. Of course, that uh, that Arkle form being represented. What did you uh, What did you think of his performance in the race as a whole? Yeah, I mean, it was, to me, it was a funny ride actually because I thought he was a horse that was going to be going to be ridden to pick the pieces up, and he was actually ridden quite prominently. He got yeah. out pace and then ran on again, didn't he? Uh, you know, and I think if he'd have been give, given more of a patient ride, he probably would have been third rather than fourth. Um, it does look like he's going to appreciate the step up and trip. Depends on how much of a hard race he had. I mean, you certainly couldn't couldn't rule him out. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I think he's been backed into favouritism, and I think you know, I think you can argue that that is fair enough. Yeah. But he has, you know, horses that finish strongly over two miles don't necessarily improve for two and a half. Not all the time, but it does look like he. You know, that's what he wants. Yeah, and of course, um, people uh, watching, I mean, the article fresh in the year, the memory as well. <coughs> form. Thank you, Paul, uh, coming into it, <laughs> into, into this. Uh, so, uh, and of course, the Colin Tizard factor, um, who uh, have had uh, pretty uh, uh, pretty decent success at uh, the uh, the national uh, uh, meeting over the uh, the years, David. And of course, I'm sure you have a, an inside line on Warlord's chances. Yeah, well, I spoke to Joe this morning uh, for the blog, obviously, and... Yeah, traditionally over the years, actually, when perhaps things haven't always gone well for them at Cheltenham, they've come to Aintree and indeed punched down and, and had a few big winners. So that can always turn a season around. Uh, in terms of Warlord, uh, Joe points out, you know, two and a half mile as a hurdler. He should appreciate this step up in trip. And yeah, he was outpacing that Arkle before staying on. I think a little bit of rain wouldn't worry them either. And he's actually been backed in nine to four from 11 to four clear favouritism and picked door. He's actually gone the other way now out to 11 to four. I thought a bit like Paul, I thought Pick Door, he was probably the safest pick. I mean, he was yet another Pendle winner for Paul Nichols. Uh, obviously, Paul's kept quite a lot of his runners fresh for this week. I say he's out to 11 to 4. But it's our first price boost of the meeting. And of course, it had to be around Team Tizard. They've got two. They've got the widow maker in here. I think they're hoping maybe pick up a bit of prize money at best with this one in what isn't the strongest grade one, obviously. But Colin Tizard to train his first winner was 9 to 4, is now out to 11 to 4. So you get the favourite Warlord. And you get the outside of the Widowmaker. Okay, the Widowmaker is a 25 to one shot. I mean, only nine pounds to find with Warlord, to be fair. So it's not uh, uh, 
Uh, it's not that much of a, a windmill to tilt at, but uh, 11 of 4 from 9 to 4. Colin Tizard to train the winner of the opener at Aintree. Let's see what, uh, uh, what people think uh, are at, uh, at home. Uh, Jesus has got back in touch. Thank you, Jesus. But uh, uh, you're a week early. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Busy time for you, lad. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's just. Um, it's, uh, he's, uh, he's alive and kicking, and he says, pick door, he just wins. Uh, let's move on. There we go. Um, what else have we, uh, we got? Um, I wouldn't go for that out for that big night out if I were you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get some sleep. Uh, but um, and so that's about it. No one seems to fancy anything in this race. So uh, more comments uh, about um, about what we're all wearing rather than what we uh, we fancy in the one forty five and eighty three apparently. So there you go. Uh, but uh, let's move on there in a second then for the manifesto. But just to reiterate how you're playing it, Keels. Uh, yeah, pick Doria. I, uh, as Dave just said, I think is the safest option but it won't be uh, it won't be a, a major betting race for me no fair enough and uh, and tom uh earn river for me yeah i will agree i hope that uh, earn river uh, takes the step up in grade in his stride david i'm gonna go with pick door here as well but hope i'm wrong and hope the tizards get off to a winner lovely stuff uh, warlord then is 94 favorite for the tizard team at aintree tomorrow uh, moving on to the uh, the second race uh, we've got the juvenile hurdlers uh, lining up uh, here uh, and a, a meeting of uh, cheltenham form here as we uh, Pitch the triumph against the Boodles. Pied Piper, of course, who was third in that at the triumph hurdle. And uh, Brazil, who won the Boodles, beating the handicap good thing Gaelic Warrior. 10 to 11, Pied Piper, Brazil, 9 to 4. Big jump out to the rest. Petit Tonnerre at 10 to 1. Knight Salute is 16 to 1 with Fortuné. Uh, 28 to 1, too friendly. Impulsive one, 33s. And Inca Prince, the 33 to 1 uh, outsider of the bunch as well. Uh, Tom, we will come to you for uh, for this uh, this first uh, race. Again, um, not so. Uh, a, a red hot lineup again. Only two horses rated over 140, which again is a little bit uh, a little bit disappointing in terms of overall quality. We had a similar um, picture last year, of course, but there was um, there was only two horses in that. There are a lot of horses who are stepping up in uh, in grade here, and a couple of uh, potential flying the ointments, uh, in particular the uh, the French Raider, the Venetia Williams at stable. Uh, but Pie Piper, who bolted up at Cheltenham and uh, travelled really well before being outstayed by Vorban, is up against Brazil. Uh, what did you make of those uh, two? And is there anything else that could get involved? Uh, of course, there's others that can get involved, but I'm not sure. I mean, uh, I, I I don't know about Venetia's horse. Petit Tonnerre didn't look that great at market raising. Night Salute and Impulsive One were pretty disappointing the last times they ran. Inca Prince isn't good enough. Too Friendly obviously was quite interesting in his on his uh, quite eye catching on his run in the Boodles, but. Got a lot to find with Brazil. I think one of the top two will win. If it rains, I think Brazil is a good thing. I really do. I think he, I think he did really well to win at uh, Cheltenham. Uh, he got knocked over at the first bend. He must have lost five, six, seven lengths. And over time, what couldn't you couldn't compare the time with the other two mile races on the day. But I thought he did really well to win. I think he's a really good horse going forward, and I think he'll win this. I think he'll beat Pied Piper. Okay, Pied Piper then 10 to 11. Brazil is 9 to 4, especially if that rain comes. Then Tom is very confident uh, about the uh, the JP Silks being carried to victory. Of course, the, the Boodles has been a uh, a springboard to uh, top level success. Band of Outlaws and Jeff Kidder over the uh, the years. Brazil 9 to 4 uh, to uh, to beat that uh, that try and form. Of course, um, you had a uh, a decent eye into the the juveniles this uh, uh, this winter. Um, one of them came off in Vorban. Um, Gaelic Warrior was beaten by Brazil. What did you make of those uh, those two races? Uh, yeah, I mean, I thought I thought Vorban was very good. I thought he just outclassed them really. Mm. Um, you know, it was one of those races where he only did what he had to do, just cruising the contention and yeah. uh, and won very easily. I think Pied Piper has shown that he, you know he has his limits. He may well be better suited to a flat track like uh, like Aintree rather than Cheltenham, but obviously he handles Cheltenham well enough because he hacked up there earlier in the season uh, and was third in the trial. Uh, and Brazil battled really well to beat a horse that is obviously well well regarded. So I can I can definitely see where Tom's coming from there. I don't like betting at short prices when there are unknowns that you know the sort of unknowns that we've got here. Fautinet, for instance, if that's how you pronounce it, uh, the Venetia Williams filly. She has an official rating in France just two pound below that of Gaelic Warrior. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, Brazil gave Gaelic Warrior I think eight pound, and he's got to give Fautinet seven. So, you know, theoretically, there ain't that much between them. Um, but obviously she's not run for nearly a year either and you know, has moved stables, we don't know. Petit Tonnerre, I, I wouldn't be as negative as Tom was. 
Uh, I thought he was just running all over his, his, his main rival last time until he walked through the last and it just stopped him in his tracks and he did well to get back up. I think he's probably got a future. Um, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't the only mistake. It was no, 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 he mistake. needs to jump. He needs yeah. to learn to jump British hurdles, that's for, that's, that's for certain. Um, but he's had a go and he's probably been well-schooled since and they obviously think he's worth running in a grade one uh, next time. But um, no, I think it'll probably be one of the front two uh, and I wouldn't argue with Tom um, Brazil, uh, probably a bit of better value than Pied Piper, but again, not a race for me. Okay, just talk to me about Knight Salute a little bit, uh, a bit, Tom. And obviously, he's putting his place in the uh, the Triumph, but um, uh, he never seemed particularly comfortable. And um, uh, again, he just never seemed in the particularly the right position during that race either. But uh, uh, flat track form previously at uh, Udoncasters and Ukempton, so um, could he outrun his odds of sixteen to one? Uh, possibly, yeah. I mean, it probably wasn't his best performance, wasn't it? But I don't know. I mean, he was beaten a long way, wasn't he? I mean, he won at Cheltenham before, hadn't he? So I think putting the track down as an excuse, probably you can't do that. Uh, I don't know why he ran so disappointingly. I mean, he was, he was, was he ninth? Uh, look, it's asking a lot. Yes, 16 to 1, of course you can take a chance. Look, I just think if, 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 Kills his weather forecast. If old Michael Fish in the corner there has got it right, and uh, and it does go, you know, it does rain all day. Uh, I, yeah, I think Brazil will love it. I think he's been crying. I think the ground, if anything, was might have been too quick for him at Cheltenham. He, he loves soft ground. He loved it as a when he was trained by Aidan O'Brien, and he was really impressive when he won his race before the the Boodles the time before on soft ground. So I think he'd relish it, and I think he'd win even easier if their rain arrives. There is one crucial thing missing, of course, uh, from Cheltenham in that, uh, the pronunciation of, uh, of your selection there, Tom. So if you could just uh, go back to the Cheltenham pronunciation, that'd be great. Brazil! There we go. Lovely stuff. <laughs> Absolute certainty now, isn't it, David? Uh, Brazil 9-4 to four for, uh, for Tom. Uh, Pied Piper narrow odds on, though, at 10-11. to 11. Yeah, I think Pied Piper is crying out to be taken on at odds on, personally, and I'm very much in the... Well, I'm in the J.P. McManus camp here. Not literally, unfortunately, but... Brazil, uh, nine to four second belt. I think it has to be the one at the prices of the front two for all the reasons Thomas said. And for the reasons sort of Paul said about Petit Tonnet, I wouldn't be writing him off around 10 to one. I think he could be a bit of an each way bet. Two from two over hurdles in France came here. As Paul said, you'd have expected him to have done plenty of schooling at home since that market raise and win. Uh, the reason Knight Salute ran so badly in the Triumph hurdle was because he was a very strong selection of mine. So that explains that one for you all. Uh, but back to this race and JP McManus, and it's the subject of our next price boost. Not that JP, of course, needs any price boost, but for everyone else out there, JP McManus to win this race was six to four, now seven to four. So you get Brazil, and we'll chuck in the market raise and winner as well. Okay, seven to four up to six to four then for either Brazil or Petit Tonnerre to win for the JP McManus green and gold. Uh, uh, but uh, Paul Keeley, what wins? Yeah, just about Brazil. Okay, Brazil it is. Tom Siegel. Definitely Brazil. Again, it's not going to know if you've ruined the pronunciation. Uh, I'll uh, I'll take Knight Salute as a, as an each way play again. I just I'm not necessarily blaming the uh, the track necessarily at uh, Cheltenham last time out, but he never seemed particularly comfortable from the outset, and he was stuck on that inside away from the principles as well. So I think he will uh, bounce back a little bit. Uh, David, I'm a third one for Brazil. Okay, there we go. Three for uh, for Brazil. Um, try and form is strong, says uh, Johnny Sin. He thinks Vorban's a freak, so I think he'll be uh, sticking with uh, with Pied Piper. Uh, Kieran Katzen says I'd give Knight Salute an each way uh, chance, but I would have liked to see a better effort in the Triumph. I'm sure everyone would, uh, Kieran. Uh, Petit Tonnerre scrapes home at Raisin and is ten to one for a Grade One. That says Iron Smiler. Not for me. Uh, so so there we go. A few uh, opinions then in the Grade One Juvenile Hurdle at Aintree tomorrow. And that's the first two races done. Let's move on to the third and the uh, the bowl, uh, a, a Grade One uh, race for sure, with uh, cracking form lines coming up against each other uh, and uh, Gold Cup form represented in the shape of uh, Protector App, who ran an absolute blinder behind the the Prom head pair in the big race at Cheltenham, and is of course a lover of Aintree, seven to two joint favourite though. But with Clanders Obo uh, bidding to uh, break that 10 year old grade one stat, 9 to 2 is Conflator, who came down at the festival. Kenboy, also a 10 year old in a grade one, is 5 to 1. El Dorado Allen is 11 to 2. Royal Pagai, 15 to 2. 22 to 1. Uh, Bristol Demai, uh, uh, nuts well far. The uh, incredible uh, uh, Hamilton team is 40 to 1. And Itchy Feet is the outsider 
of the bunch here for the uh, the bowl. But as I said, maybe not the uh, the greatest manifesto, uh, maybe not the re the red hot triumph uh, uh, form <coughs> uh, test we would have liked to see in that second race. But this is a cracking lineup. Uh, Keels for for this race. We've got uh, Ryan Air form represented. We've got uh, last year's form here represented. Punchers Town uh, in the shape of Clanders O bow, bow. We've got Gold Cup form. We've got everything you could pretty much want in this contest. I reckon. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's, you know, apart from a winner it, from you. It is well, yeah. Apart from the winner, yeah. No, it, it really is a tight heat, isn't it? Mm. I mean, you, could, you know, it's easy enough to argue Protector, who is favourite, is the most likely winner after his third in the Gold Cup. He's the youngest horse in the race. He did well to finish third, considering how hard he belted the last as well. Uh, and he's relatively fresh because that was his first run for for a while. Um, yeah, it's one of those. For, for years, you used to say horses who run well in the Gold Cup couldn't do so well in this. And in fact, four of the last five winners ran in the Gold Cup, but three of them failed to get round in it. Um, but then Mike Bite came along, had an absolute brutal war with Native River, and still came back here and hacked up, didn't he? So, you know, who knows uh, what's going to happen? I just thought at the prices, I thought there was a little bit of value in Kemboy who has been kept fresh. He didn't run so well last time, but he wasn't the only one of Willie Mullins is not to run uh, well at that meeting at Leopardstown or in, or in the Irish Gold Cup, but is close third to um, Galvin and Aplutar from firms. He's, he's, he's sort of, you know, pretty much as good as he was. And uh, I'm not sure that's the case about Clanders Obo. I don't think, you know, it just he's disappointed me in two runs this season, mm. uh, I must admit. So Kenboy, obviously three years ago, he won this in a hack canter. Uh, um, having unseated at the first or second in the Cheltenham Gold Cup, uh, went there really, really fresh. One on the bridle, he's been kept for this. He, you know, he wants a, a flattish track, I think, doesn't he? Um, and I think, uh, I think he's going to run well. Okay. Um, just to, uh, to pick up a couple of things there. I mean, Clanners Oba, yes, he has been disappointing, but he was, I wouldn't say similarly disappointing last season before bolted up in this. He ran a little bit better, didn't he? But yeah, he, he still got he only, just, he only just got chin giving weight to Secret Investor. He wasn't a bad horse, but this time he, yeah. was, well, he, he was well seen off by Eldorado Allen and Royal Pagai, and Trainer has gone for a headgear switch, which is a, a, another worry for me as well. It's now blinkers instead of the pieces. So obviously he's got a good record when he switches headgear, but I mean, you know, he's obviously got it in his own head that they're not working anymore, so let's try something else. Yeah, and he's, yeah. I mean, he's always been a bit of a, uh, a bit of a, I want to say all or nothing for Clemens over, but sometimes he can look absolutely incredible. And, yeah, and, and other times like he's, he's not that bothered. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So maybe maybe he does need them to liven him up again, but uh, I, I I just thought, you know, at the prices, I'd take Kemboy. Um, wouldn't be surprised if Eldorado well and run well, and I might even have a couple of quid place on a nuts well. Yeah. Just because he's just a, because he's a massive price and he runs it well, and it's, it, it's easy enough to see a few of these run below form. Yeah, and uh, I mean, again, we, obviously we're, we're hoping maybe Tommy's Oscar for a, uh, a big win at the Cheltenham Festival mm. for them. But um, the I mean, again, I was looking at get just the record is incredible. Thirteen races with six horses they've won this year, two hundred and thirty grand in prize yeah, money. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's, I really, really, really do know what they're doing, and yeah. obviously Nutswell has some good form around here. He's won an old run chase, back to form last time as well. Um, that he cannot win it on form, well, we know we all know that. Mm. But you know, this is one of those meetings where horses run below form. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but Kemboy it is uh, for uh, for Paul the the winner a uh, back in two thousand and nineteen. Kemboy is a five to one shot. Uh, over to you, uh, Tom. Of course, um, everyone was pretty keen on Protector at, uh, in the studio for the uh, for the Gold Cup, and uh, I said at the time that this is his absolute ideal race, and here he is. Uh, he's uh, he's top of the market. And uh, he's uh, he's fresh for the skeletons, but you've also got previous with Conflated, of course, and uh, Royal Pagai. So quite a few horses that you've uh, liked the look of over the the winter season are up against each other. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, worried about Protectorat. I mean, I think I think what Gills said is spot on. I think he's the most likely winner, and he was brilliant here earlier in the season, wasn't he? When he was, that's the sort of thing that, that got me thinking that he was a proper top class horse, and he, he ran a blinder in the Gold Cup, as Gills said. He might probably. You know, he, ran, he would have been a clear third, maybe even second, challenging for second if he hadn't smashed the last. But uh, I don't like horses that he must have had a really hard race that day, the Gold Cup. And he was coming back fresh off a break. So there is the possibility that he bounces on the back of that. It's only guesswork. We don't really know that. But at a short price, I wanted to take him on. Flande Zobo in the blinkers uh, is another one. As Keel said, I completely agree. He's just not been in the same form this year. I thought he had every every right to run better in the King George, and he didn't. And then he was pretty lamentable at Newbury. I don't know what went wrong, to be honest. Blinkers, maybe a bit of rain might bring him back. He's clearly got 
old back form that gives him a, a, a top chance. Conflated's in there. I think he would have been a clear second in the Ryanair. I think we saw what he could do in the Irish Gold Cup. Kenboy, as Keel said, previous winner. El Dorado Allen was... I mean, I think you can give him all the chance. Even Bristol de May, you know, if it really rained and, 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 and became soft ground. I think he could go on Royals. And, you know, that's what goes so well here. So, yeah, it's not a race I had any opinion on. I thought there was going to be loads of pace. I thought it was going to depend on who got in the best rhythm. I marginally prefer, uh, I marginally thought I might end up back in Royal Pagai again, just simply because I think he ran really well in the Gold Cup, made a few scruffy mistakes and was rallying again at the line. But it's not a race I'll be, I'll be, del- I'll be having a great, I'll be having a great bet on at all because I think it's really, really hard. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, yeah, it's a great. Like I said, it is a great. It's such a great lineup, which makes it more difficult to uh, to piece together. Uh, of course, Venetia Williams had a fantastic uh, chance. Them Tom only one horse out of the money, and that was uh, Brave Shashku who fell quite early on. Uh, Royal Pagai did run a, a big race. Just a just a word on El Dorado uh, Allen because I I thought this would be be really interesting for him. He was the only horse to to be even vaguely keep tabs on Alaho, and it's no surprise to see his petrol gauge run out. I know Conflated would have finished ahead of him, and obviously Shannadil ran on as well. But you know they were picking up the pieces late on. Um, if he gets into a rhythm like he did at Newbury round here, um, they uh, they could be uh, it could be quite hard to peg back. And I know you said there's a lot of pace, but how many races do we yeah do we say oh there's pace on here and it, and, and they don't come back. No, it's true, but there is a lot of a lot of horses that like to get on with it, aren't there? Mm. Uh, Kenboy does, uh, Bristol de Mai does, uh, uh, and as you say, Elder Allen Allen's best form was was there. It's, it'll be a rhythm race for me. I know it sounds ridiculous because it's something you can't predict, and therefore I'm sort of sitting on the fence. But I think it'll be about which 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 horse gets in the best jumping rhythm at an early stage. We've seen it around entry so many times. I'm not confident I can find which one that is. To be perfectly honest, so I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna sit it out. But I, I understand why anyone is backing anything in the race. To be honest. Okay, there we go. So uh, it's uh, it's open season in the uh, in the bowl then for for Tom Siegel, uh, David Stevens. Where's the uh, where's the cash being going here? Because uh, Protectorat was always likely to be uh, to be favoured off the at the back of that uh, that Gold Cup run. But Clanders Obo has his uh, his fan club as well. Um, it's uh, it's an open little betting heat. This. Yeah, it's a really. Terrific, fascinating race for all the reasons the guys have said there. A bit of uh, protector that's a strong favourite, I'd say now. She's actually clear 100 to 30 favourite. Clander Zobo out to four to one. So Hunter's made the pick there on the Gold Cup third. And there's money around for Kenboy, which I'm imagining is the Paul Keeley factor, of course. Uh, in terms of Eldorado Allen, of course, another Tizard runner. I mean, they're very much looking forward to this. Obviously, he had Royal Pagai and uh, Clander Zobo behind him at Newbury. I wouldn't want desperate amount of rain for this horse of course but hopefully he can run a big race and then I'll say it's a question of whether he's be, uh, good enough to beat the rest of them the likes of Kemboy and, and Conflated um, but Sir Alex Ferguson a man who loved nothing more than winning at Liverpool in his time in charge of Manchester United he's got a massively strong hand in this race he's co-owner of the first two in the betting protector and Clanders over along with the likes of Jeb Mason I should add but Sir Alex I'm sure he'll be there tomorrow and can he have a reverse forecast he won't care which of them wins, I'm sure. A Sir Alex Ferguson forecast here was 11 to 2, is now 7 to 1. So Fergie fans out there, 7 to 1, but another one that uh, I'm kind of in agreement with the guys. I think it's a really good race, but it's impossible to have a strong, strong opinion on it. OK, there we go. Um, unless uh, unless you have a very strong opinion that uh, Sir Alex Ferguson is going to have it right off. Uh, 7 to 1 out from 11 to 2. Uh, for that reverse forecast on those two. Uh, do people have strong... I mean, people do have strong... Anyone who's in the live chat on these shows um, are not shy of strong opinions. Um, Ken Boy has no chance, says Daniel. Uh, it's not 2019. <laughs> there we go. Um, uh, You're all right, Paul. Do you... Uh... Yeah, yeah, I know. I've just had a filthy cold and a, and a chest infection for the past week and a bit. It's not COVID. I constantly <laughs> test myself. Oh, yeah. Well, I, t- I take back being thrilled about you being in the studio <laughs> at the start. Um... Exactly. Did you get rid of him? Yeah, yeah if you could. Good, yeah. Tom, is there any room in that office? Uh, but um, <laughs> up the hill says uh, Nutswell uh, for uh, for him. Daniel Brennan says Royal Pagai wins. Simple. It's very simple for uh, for the uh, the guys on the uh, the live chat tonight. Uh, plenty of rain around uh, uh, um, for uh, for uh, for the uh, the people at, uh, at home as well. And um, Billy Abbey says Conflate to beat Manella Indo by six and a half lengths and Asterian for Lange by twelve and a quarter lengths, whereas Protectorat lost by two lengths to Indo and only beat for Lange by three and a quarter lengths. So thank you for that, Billy. Uh, that's uh, lovely stuff. Still don't know who you actually think is going to win the race, but uh, that, uh, that definitely helps. And Protector has got course form, will also like the ground, and should definitely hit the frame, says Peter Davis. So uh, a few opinions 
flying around then for the the ball tomorrow. Uh, Paul Keeley, your tentative one, if you make it to the race. Uh, yeah, Kenboy. <laughs> yeah, Kenboy for me. Yeah. Kenboy it is for for Paul Keeley. Tom? Uh, it's extremely tentative. <laughs> <laughs> Don't again. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Paul coughed over that. What was that, Tom? Uh, probably a good job as well. Uh, uh, Royal Pagai, but it's very tentative. I won't be playing in the race, I don't think. OK, Royal Pagai it is. Uh, I will go with uh, El Dorado Allen to... Uh, uh, hopefully jump them into submission uh, from a prominent position. David Stevens. Our latest price boost is Paul Keeley to make the end of the show <laughs> out to seven to four from five to four. Uh, I'm going to join you in the El Dorado LN camp. Okay, yeah. I thought that cyanide would take uh, a lot longer to kick in, but apparently <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's taken a hold now. Okay, that's uh, three grade ones then uh, done and dusted for, uh, for Aintree day one. We've still got one more to, uh, to come. The Aintree hurdle. Uh, of course, with uh, seven runners lining up for tomorrow's event. Normally, this is a bit of a head-to-head -head between the champion hurdle runners uh, stepping up and the stayers stepping down, but it is very much dominated by those who uh, like to race over the two-mile trip. And it is the uh, champion hurdle second and third who uh, are dominating the market here. Zana here just getting the nod at 15-8. to eight. Epitant is 2-1. to one. Bruin up a storm at 11-2. Mon Morale is 17-2. to two. Glory and Fortune 12s. McFabulous 14s. And Guard Your Dreams. The outsider of the bunch then here at 25 to 1. And again, another good lineup, uh, Tom, but another uh, tricky one to decipher. Uh, like I said, it's normally a bit of a mix and match. We've only really got McFabulous, who's been running in the, uh, the staying events over the, uh, the course of the season. Um, Epitant, of course, stepping up in trip. Nicky Henderson's won this four times, twice with horses coming up in trip, twice with horses coming down in trip. So I'm looking forward to you flying an angle into this race. Um, you're going to struggle. I wouldn't look. I wouldn't be looking forward very hard because it's not going to be. Uh, it's not going to be much fun. Uh, same as just like the last race. I mean, I, I, Zana here is an. In, is, you know, he keeps keeps being sort of fancied for these races. He's won one race in his last seven, I think, and that was at Down Royal at eight to thirteen. Now he's been taking on the best. I get it, but he looks a bit one paced. May I say for a horse that's finished place in a chat in a champion a hurdle and a triumph hurdle? Uh, it's pretty pretty harsh to say because he's clearly top class but i think the step up to two and a half miles will really suit him i think he's been crying out for it so that would be my angle with him uh what the problem is is the um, i think uh, it's been the paper the other day was the former gordon elliott's horses they're just not running that well and i know for a fact that they are slightly worried about it they keep saying they're not but when you're having horses beaten at one to four i think you should be worried about it uh is he going to repeat his Cheltenham form back here? Don't know. I think Epitant should stay. Every time I see her run, I think she's a strong stayer. So she's right in there. She's obviously getting the seven pounds as well. The rest are a little bit, you know, well, quite a long way below those two. Now, everything depends on whether they stay and whether they run their races. I think one of them will, and I think one of them will win. Uh, I personally slightly prefer Epitant because I just think she's, she's crying out for the two and a half miles, and I think she's... Probably just with the seven pound allowance, we'll, we'll do it. But the rest look a bit below for me. Glory and Fortune was fifth in the champion hurdle, wasn't it? He sort of stayed up late and picked up the pieces. Uh, uh, didn't seem to stay two and a half miles in a handicap at Newbury at the start of the season. He'd come off the back of a, a, a really good win in the uh, Foss Last. So I couldn't really see why he would have run badly there. McFabulous uh, has always been very highly regarded. Hasn't quite put it together, but I think there's a good horse in there waiting to come out. Whether it'll be tomorrow, I don't know. Mon Miral, I think, has got plenty to prove. Guard Your Dreams isn't good enough. So I think, you know, it sounds boring, but I think it'll be between the top two, and I think Epitant might win. Okay, Epitant then. Um, who, yeah, look, digging into the pedigree, uh, Tom, of course, the, the, sire, the sire of Alaho as well, but a yeah. really healthy uh, strike rate over this, uh, this trip. And like you said, she, I mean, she looked like she was... Not necessarily going nowhere at the uh, at the bottom of the hill, but both the last two champion hurdles, she's uh, she's uh, she's rattled home, hasn't she, over two miles? Exactly. That's the thing. I think she's. I think two and a half miles around here will really suit her. That's why I'm siding with her. I think the seven pound allowance obviously helps as well. But there is a doubt. She hasn't run over it. Uh, but she's a winner, and Zana here might not be. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Zana here. Admittedly, every time he runs, you think he needs to step up in trip. But uh, Gordon Elliott, yeah, I mean, it was a it was a shocking week for him at, uh, at Cheltenham. I mean, with all the horses he'd got going in, to, to, to come away with uh, with two winners from the, in the entire week and, and not necessarily in... Yeah, two from 60, not from nine or something in April in, in Ireland since. Um, yeah, they're just not running well, yeah. uh, you know, and it does happen. And when they don't run well, you oppose them. I mean, look, end of the day, I think this is a shocking race. I think it's dreadful. Uh, yeah. 
I think I think all the two mile hurdles, with the exception of honeysuckle, have been rubbish for ages. And I'm sorry to upset people, but I include Epitant in that. Since she won the champion hurdle, she's been nothing like the horse she was when she won it. Uh, I mean, she's beaten Gloria Fortune two and a quarter lengths at Kempton and dead eated, but not so sleepy. He would have beat her if he hadn't made a mistake in the last. Not so sleepy, his official rating is as high as that of Zana here. You know, that's how good we're talking about these horses are. Yeah. They don't set a great standard. They're both stepping up the chip. Yes, they might stay, but no, they might not. Zana here doesn't win very often. Uh, I think Epitant is the most likely winner, but if you can't have a crack at something in this race, especially with our good friends at Cole offering three places. Uh, you know, I mean, I think you've got to have a crack at something else. I thought McFabulous were going to run a really, really good race at Cheltenham, but Paul Nichols took him out because of the, uh, of the rain on watered ground. Um, we now have rain coming on watered ground. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I don't think it, I don't think it'll be as bad, and I don't think he I don't think he's that he, he, he's that much ground dependent anyway. He's one on soft ground. With the horse or Paul Nichols? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> McFabulous. Uh, he. You know, he, he went off at a much shorter price for this race last year mm. and in a much, much better race. And things just haven't gone right for him since, but he had a wind up straight afterwards. Uh, and he showed he showed more than enough. I don't think I don't think Chilton really is track, but he showed more than enough when second to Stormy Island in the well kill. And he actually breezed alongside the leaders, um, looking to take it up, uh, jumping the second last, coming around the bend in the cleave, and then he did what he did at Newbury when he was when he was beaten by Time Hill. He didn't stay three mile, he just doesn't get three mile. But he's a fresh horse, first time cheap pieces, you get three places and he's 14 to 1 and be rude not to. Mm. It's just it's just fabulous grade one horse. Yes, I know, but yeah, but this isn't a grade one, it's crap, it's rubbish. <laughs> right? A year ago, McFabulous was rated 158, that's one pound below Zanahir, who's the highest rated horse in the race and never wins. Like, you know what I mean? It's not a good race. Okay. Let's not pretend that it is. It isn't. No, no, it's fair. I'm not, it's okay. <laughs> None of this it. lot will have a prayer of reaching the first five in next year's champion hurdle. No, that's, uh, it's, it's not been a vintage. Garbage. Couple of seasons, isn't Garbage. It? Rubbish. Well, apart from obviously, I mean, honey, honey. Yeah. <laughs> Rubbish. Well, my phone's out there. My Twitter's going to be going. <laughs> I mean, normally, but that's what that's what you do it for, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. yeah. Of course it is. Yeah. 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 Can it's we um, can we talk about Glory and Fortune briefly? Because um, yeah, you, I love Glory. Been, I love yeah. Glory and Fortune, but I did have a you know, as Tom said earlier on at Newby when he didn't stay, I had a decent bet on him that day. Uh, a, I mean, that that came, that came, and I thought he was certain to stay after the Greatwood. But it came thirteen days after the Greatwood. Was it yeah. not a bit of a? It's possible. It's possible that it was just a bit too quick. Yeah, I felt um, like I felt like they were a bit frustrated by how it went in the Greatwood, and they went, mm, "Oh, sod it, let's, let's have, have another go." Yeah, 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 yeah. That is that is entirely plausible. Mm. I mean, he, he would. He would be my other one. I just have it a, a, a nagging doubt. I mean, he should stay. He's by fame and glory, for God's sake. So yeah, I mean, yeah. there's, you know, I mean, there's plenty of stamina there, and he looks and like again he was know, he runs like he, he runs like he will. Yeah. But um, you know, with a lot of you know, with a lot of wind and some rain forecast, it's going to take a bit of stamina to win this race. So yeah. you know, there are plenty that aren't proven with it. Okay, there we go. Um, strong words from uh, from Paul Keeley. Um, fantastic race, says uh, says Keel, <laughs> Sir David Stevens. I'm sure he'll have the. Uh, oh, hang on, it's not Cole, sponsored by Cole. Is it? <laughs> oh, sorry, no, no. <laughs> no, it's all right. You're safe. You're safe. Keel. You're off the show. You're not, you can't come back tomorrow night. You're not going to come back tomorrow night, honestly. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I'm not coming back tomorrow night. No, no, I'm not coming no. back anyway, even if I'm still alive. Yeah, well. Wow. Paul Keeley, he died doing what he loved. Zanir, <laughs> uh, the, uh, the 50 to 8 favourite here for the entry hurdle. Uh, three places, David Stevens. Uh, what a treat. It would be wonderful. Paul Keel's last contribution to the world was <laughs> criticising this entry hurdle till he literally expired on air. Uh, obviously, we don't want that to happen. Um, yeah, I, I get where Paul's coming from, obviously. I think of the two at the head of the betting, I have to be in the Epitant camp getting £7 and... It's Gordon Elliott form and the fact that Epitant does actually win races. Uh, so I do give her a chance if she stays. But working on the same basis of kills with the three places each way, I came down on the side of brewing up a storm. One here, first time up this season. He's at the indifferent season, came down in the rail kill, then was beaten in the national spirit last time. But I'm hoping he can improve on his run in this race last year. And as I say, with those three places each way. Mon Morales was brilliant in the, the juvenile race a year ago. If he's a spring horse and loves entry, but you could give him a chance. But yeah, I think for me, Epitant of the two at the head of the betting, but uh, brewing up a storm, hopefully to shake them up. But our final price boost of the night does revolve around Epitant, the mayor here. Second in the champion hurdle, of course, so represents the best of the form behind Honeysuckle. She is a two to one shot, but you can have five to two up to 20 quid if you do fancy Epitant. For what is, I think we're all agreed, a below par entry hurdle. 
Best I've ever seen. Best I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Epitone, five to two up from two to one then to win the, the 3.30 at, uh, at Aintree. Uh, just uh, get a look uh, at a, a few uh, selections uh, on the uh, the chat. Thanks to uh, Keith McMahon. Uh, uh, pff, it's always nice to have a fan. Uh, but, uh, and, uh, <laughs> How many of you had to delete? <laughs> yes, well, I mean, uh, Keith, you could buy me dinner later with, uh, with some of these comments, I'll tell you. Uh, Zana here is a stayer. Epitant wins this, says, uh, says up the hill. Uh, avoid mon morale at all costs, says, uh, says Daniel uh, Brennan. And uh, elsewhere, we've uh, got uh, Epitont and Brewing Up a Storm reverse forecast with Luke Salmon, although Bubba1407 says Brewing Up a Storm has got absolutely no chance. And I can assure you <laughs> that I am not making these comments up. Uh, OK, let's, uh, let's get the selections of the Aintree hurdle. Uh, it's a vintage renewal, and what wins it? Uh, yeah, McFabulous. Each way, three places, uh, uh, with our friendly bookmaker's call. There you go. McFabulous it is for Keels. Tom? Uh, I think Epitont will win. I, I, like Keel says, it's it's not a great race, and she has to prove she stays, but I think she will. Okay, very well. Uh, and I'll uh, play Glory and Fortune each way with those three places on offer. David? I'm going to go, is it Luke Salmon, who just said that Epitont brewing up a storm forecast for me? Okay, lovely stuff. Right, so uh, let's move on then. We've got three races to uh, to get through uh, on uh, on day one of uh, Aintree, and uh, we've uh, we've got the Fox Hunters here, of, uh, of course, over the uh, the National Fences uh, and Jet in the uh, uh, the Silks of the Whaley Cohens, who of course uh, have been seen to good effect uh, over these fences plenty of times over the years. Heading the betting here at three to one, Late Night Pass five to one, Cat Tiger eleven to two, Porlock Bay seven to one, Cousin Pascal ten to one, Mighty Stowaway ten to one, Maracuja fourteens, Pont Avan is sixteen to one and bigger prices the rest. And of course, uh, it is one of those races uh, that we throw to Tom Siegel, the man who loves races that bookies can't be bothered to uh, delve too deeply into. I think that should be not this one. Not this one. I don't. I thought. I thought. Uh, I thought Jet had a magnificent chance. Really, it's just that uh, I'm not. You know, if I, I'm struggling to, I'm struggling to think that three to one around those fences. But as I say every year, those fences don't take much jumping these days. So to get over the first three, I think you're, 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 it's, it's plain sailing. Really, he proved last year in the in the Grand National when he went miles clear, didn't he? And he looked like look at one stage like they weren't going to catch him. He was. You know, he's he's a he's a proper classy chaser that's got classy form this year, running against horses that haven't over a trip that he likes, over over a track that he likes. So, you know, I can see the case for thinking that three to one isn't actually not a bad price. It sounds stupid in a in a race over the national fences, but I think he stands out. Those looking for big price ones, I would throw in uh JP's horse, stand up and fight. He beat Bill away as a young horse. Things have gone wrong since, but They've kept him fresh for this. I think he could go well. And the other one is he fell at the first last year. He's trained by Richard Newland. I've forgotten his name. Dashing Perk. I thought he's he, when he went when he the way he jumped around stand down. I always thought he'd be perfect for this. So I came here last year watching him in this race. Had a good bet on him, and he fell at the first. Uh, wasn't his fault. He got completely smashed and knocked over. Jumped the fence perfectly well. Uh, if he gets to a rhythm out front, he could be one of those horses that just runs well at the track. But I think Jettle take everything out of their comfort zone. Sam Whaley Cohen's got a great record at the track and I think he'll just win. Okay, there you go. Tom Siegel thinks he will just win. Jet, of course, um, this time last year, taking on slightly warmer opposition. Um, and uh, yeah, he's, he's really one. Of course, the, the favourite um, won the, uh, uh, the, the corresponding race at Cheltenham, albeit... You know. Yeah, well, this is, this is, this is it. The thing, about, the thing about this particular Hunter Chase is we don't have any... Um, Unknowns from the point to point mm. field, really, do we? Like, you know, we just have loads of exposed horses, and on all known form, Jet is a miles better horse than any of these ever have been or ever will be. Uh, and, you know, what he did last year in the Grand National is similar to what Live Love Laugh did a few years ago in the National before, you know, after the COVID gap, coming back and making a mockery of the top. Um, he just went from the front, jumped from, you know, from fence to fence, as the old cliche goes, never, never touched a twig. Uh, and that's what he'll do. He's, you know, there's, uh, there's 24 runners. So what? He's going to be in front of them from the start, uh, and he's better than them. He'll jump the, you know, on last year's evidence, he'll jump better than any of them. Uh, and you know, he's got, you know, Sam Welly Cohen has a better record than the vast majority of professionals riding over the over the national fences. Things won six times over them overall. So you know, there's no negatives, and you know, the, the 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 fences aren't hard to jump. The ground is decent, so it's not like he's going to be slipping on land or whatever. Like you know, what I mean, we, we may well have had a fair bit of rain by then, but you know, that isn't going to bother him. Um, 
I, don't, I can't see what beats him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really and the, the advantage is, again, we talk about these races, but it is, you, you do not want to be messing around in, in ninth, 10th, 11th out the back, but the way Chet ran in the National last year, you, can, you know exactly what's going You know exactly what he's going to do. He's not going to, you know, if he's in any trouble, it'll be trouble of his own making, because there won't be anything in front of him. There might be something that tries to be alongside him, but, yeah. you know, I mean, he's not going to be tucked in behind horses waiting for them to make a mistake. He's going to go out. And as we know, Sam Wally Cohn knows how, it's not like he's going to go off like a bat out of hell on a, on a, on a jockey that, that doesn't know how to ride a race from the front. You know what I mean? He's pretty good, Sam Wally Cohen, especially around those fences. So I don't, you know, I can't build up any enthusiasm for opposing him. And, you know, unlike me, betting three to one shots in 24 races, I have backed him. Okay, there you go. Uh, Paul Keeley has backed him. A uh, quick word for Paul Lock Bay, um, uh, Tom, uh, who of course uh, won at uh, Channel last year. Hasn't been seen, uh, 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 really, at, uh, at a decent level since. Uh, beaten in a under chase at Bangor last time out at short odds, but um, that would have prepped him up nicely for, uh, for, the, for the spring events. And he's um, obviously he's not as classy as, uh, as Jet, but he, he never puts a foot wrong. Yeah, well, that puts me off. The thing that puts me off is he didn't run at Cheltenham. Mm. Uh, he can't have had a smooth preparation. They would definitely not be going here without having gone to the race that he won last year. You know, he beat Pillaway. Pillaway's come out and won it this year. So I have a, you know, he just can't have had a smooth run into this to this season. Uh, if he's back to the form that that uh, he was last some, uh, last spring when he won, when he won the Fox Hunters at Channel, of course he's got a chance. But uh, he got beaten at Log Odds at um, at Bangor, and oh, I don't know, I don't know. You're taking a risk back in him, I think. Okay, there you go. Uh, David Stevens, do you have anything to assuage the risk in this race? Uh, nothing to add on what the chaps have said about Jet already. I mean, just watch a rerun of last year's Grand National, see how he bowled along there. Uh, his jockey may be an amateur, but his record around these fences, as the boys have said, is thoroughly professional. And yeah, three to one, I'm a bit like kills with this. That doesn't worry me at all. So uh, five places each way. A couple of others that Tom mentioned. Stand up and fight is a 25 to one shot. And dashing, I thought he said dashing Burke. I didn't know who, which one of us he was criticising, but it's actually dashing Perk, I see. Well, you. No one's ever it's... accused me of being dashing, mate. So anyway, it's... I'm lucky <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, I haven't caught a bit. I have, anyway. That's a 20 to one shot, but yeah, I'm very much in the jet camp. And... I'm going to have more on now, Paul, just to upset you. <laughs> yeah, he just steady on. He'll stand up and fight. That's all he'll be uh, doing. That's all I've got for this. That's, that's, that's all I've got. I've, I've petered out early. 4.05 at Aintree. Uh, there we go. Uh, Fox Hunters, uh, what wins it? Jet. Jet. Tom Siegel? Yeah, Jet will win, but Dashing Perk might run well. Okay. Uh, and uh, David Stevens? <laughs> jet. Come on, just say Jet, Ross. Just so that once we're all in agreement. I mean, she was my favourite gladiator, so... Oh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh. Go on, let's go for Jet then, because I don't have another opinion. Uh, but <laughs> there we go. Jet is 3-1 to one favourite for uh, for tomorrow's uh, Fox Hunters uh, with uh, two more races to go. Uh, the, the Red Run Handicap Chase uh, then is our uh, next event. A, a big field in a two-mile handicap chase. The man to my left will have been going through this race with a fine-tooth comb. And it's Ferrero Bamboo who heads the betting at 13-2. to two. Before midnight, 15-2. to two. King Darjean is 8-1. to one. Gunsight Ridge, 9-1. to one. Global Citizen, 9-1. to one. Time White is 12-1 to one with Bold Enough and Dollars and bigger prices. The rest, we've got Grand Annual form, of course, uh, in this race. We've also got plenty of horses who would have run in the Grand Annual had the uh, heavens not open and the watering cans been uh, deployed as well. So uh, we've got those who turned up and ran uh, and those who uh, gave it a swerve and uh, which of those will come out on the top. Uh, of course, it was pretty desperate ground in those uh, uh, those circumstances, so the lights are before midnight and, uh, and time white. No great surprise to see them, uh, them pulled out, but it, it was a, a bit of a strange race, I thought, this year. Again, I mean, after, after a fence, you, half of them had no chance. Yeah, and Ferreira Bamboo was last. Yeah. Tail, almost. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Couldn't understand that. I mean, you know, it obviously... Came through really well, finished third. I mean, he does seem to get beaten a lot, doesn't he? Which is a little worry about him, isn't it? Uh, you know what I mean? But, you know, the more I looked at this race, the more I thought to myself, you know, the one horse that's being underestimated is the one who thrashed for Aero Bamboo when he last ran and thrashed and, and, and had Gunsight Ridge. I mean, they're, the, they're, they're two of the first three in the betting, and he won easily at Sandown, and that's Dolos. Okay. Now, the big caveat with that is the fact that that race at Sandown is very much Dolos's Gold Cup. He's mm. running it five times, he's won it three times, been second in the other two. But... You know, and he's shown some really good form in that. If you forget that he was a really, really good horse and he's still only nine, he actually gave first flow £22 and beat him in that race once. Uh, you know, and he dropped so far in the handicap 
that even having gone up for that, he's still nine pound lower than he was this season, and a stone lower than he was at his peak. And he's only nine. Now he's never won round a left-handed track uh, over fences. He has one over. He has one over hurdles. But he does have some really, really good, good form on left-handed tracks. A bit like a second to Theon Bowler to uh, uh, Air one year. And I just think that it drops so far that he's still an exceptionally well handicapped horse. And I think it's a silly price at 12 to 1. I don't see why on earth he should be double the price of Feral Bamboo. Uh, uh, and much bigger than Gunsight Ridge, who he beat out of sight. Okay, there you go. Donos then. Um, yeah, who, but uh, I mean, it is that Sandown Farm. I'm just looking at I mean, very vague calculations in my head while you were talking there. But um, before that, since February 2021, again at Sandown, he's mm. been beaten about 250 lengths combined yeah, in every exactly. other race. He's obviously keyed up for that race, but he had, because the handicapper over the past year has started dropping horses much quicker. Mm. He's actually dropped down to a ridiculously good mark. I wish I'd spotted it at Sandown. I, wish, I really wish I had, but I didn't. Uh, partly because Paul Nichols was in, in such bad form. But he was yeah. like the only horse that ran his race that day of, yeah, was, yeah. Uh, of Paul Nichols. So, you know, whatever it is with that horse and that race. But he's still exceptionally well treated after it. And I think you've got to give him another go. Okay. Uh, Dolos then uh, given another go by by Paul Keeley currently a, a twelve to one shot uh, here then uh, yes a, a very quirky horse a hard one to uh, to predict but again another one of these uh, races uh, Tom that uh, you were saying about rhythm races uh, earlier on this is uh, the type of uh, the type of contest where you pause it after a furlong and a half and you go right they're finishing the first four um, of course I'm asking you to predict what those four horses are going to be uh, several hours in advance but what was on the short list. Well, Global Citizen isn't because he's not running. Uh, I think we better make that clear to start with. He's been pulled out in the last half hour or so. So the the Cheltenham winner is a non-runner, I'm reliably informed, which actually changes the race a bit because he's such a strong front-running horse that something like before midnight might actually get an easier time of it up front. Uh, I don't. I'm not one for really worrying about pace and stuff like that in races, but I thought that was a significant non-runner, really. Uh, I get... Kills his case for Dolos on, on a handicapping front. I am worried about him going this way round. I know he had old form, but it's a long time ago when he was running well uh, left-handed. Might be, once again, that is a, that's not the sort of thing I really worry about. But deep down, that, that, that is in the back of my mind. I liked two in this race. I thought it was the best betting race of the day by a country mile. I thought Henry de Bromwich, bold enough, had a really good chance. I think he's a really good chaser. I think he's a much better chaser than he is a hurdler. He ran in a hurdle here last year at the meeting. He finished third to... Roland Ward and Comprond, uh, I think that's really good for him. He was 10 lengths clear of the rest. I think he's a better chaser. He had the winter off because he didn't really like mucky ground. Would would obviously be a concern if it got really, really testing tomorrow. But he came back at Garen in heavy ground and ran perfectly fine. Henry de Bromhead won this race two years ago with a similar type. I just think this will be his sort of... Uh, uh, the race he's been targeted for. And don't worry that Mark Walsh is riding him and Rachel Blackmore isn't. Uh, because he always rides him. Uh, Mark Walsh has obviously has an affinity with uh, with this horse. He's ridden him three or four times since Rachel last rode him. So I thought Bold Enough was was my number one shot. The other one I quite liked was a horse of Donald McCain's called Gaelic Coast, uh, who ran in the race last year and finished well behind loads of these. In fact, he's still he's in a higher he's rated higher now than he was last year, and he could only finish tenth last year. But I thought he improved massively for a wind up last time in a Cheltenham handicap one by Torn and Freight. He finished in front of Cool Cody. He finished just behind Spirit of the Games. But if you stop the race two out, he was going to win. He cantered all over them. He looked coming, turning for home, he looked like he was certain to win. Uh, I thought he didn't stay the two and a half miles. I think he's a, 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 a fast run two miles around a place like Aintree. I think it's going to see him in better light. He's got the pieces on tomorrow. What I especially like is the fact that Donald McCain has obviously retargeted him at this race. He must have, he must think that this race is going to suit him because he wouldn't be coming back here uh, off a higher mark if he didn't think he's a lot better than he showed last year. And I just think on what he showed at Cheltenham that day uh, after a wind operation and with the cheap pieces on, I think two miles on a quick track like Aintree will really suit him and I think he's on a good mark. So they were my two, uh, bold enough for Henry de Bromhead and Gaelic Coast. Okay. Who is written by Brian Hughes, who is better than anyone else at the moment, I think. 
Yeah, absolutely. It has been for quite a while, I would say. Um, and so Gaelic Coast for Donald McCain, who won this with Katachenko uh, a, right. uh, a few years ago. And it uh, and Gaelic Coast, he, he lost the shoe in this race last year as well. So you, you get the feeling that um, plenty of things went wrong for, uh, for, for Gaelic Coast. Second time wind up, first time cheat pieces. They're throwing the lot at Gaelic Coast. Uh, I'll give a shout out. There's one that I thought was a little bit interesting. That's uh, Alexia the, uh, the Nuts for, uh, for Colin Tizard and Brendan Powell again. Uh, the the Eldorado Allen uh, combination, Grade One winning hurdler, and um, uh, nothing went right for him at Cheltenham last time out. John Joe Neal on uh, on board, but he, he he was quite prominent for uh, for a while. He didn't seem to particularly enjoy conditions, but I thought his previous two wins and the figures he put in there would put him right into it. He will also be a prominent runner, which uh, I, I do like to uh, to see in these kind of events. So there's a few at decent prices for uh, for us there, David. How many places? What have you got up your sleeve? Hopefully not a wasp. <laughs> We are five places each way. Alexia de Nuts, you mentioned there, is a 25 to one shot. And the Tom Siegel followers have obviously been out because Gaelic Coast is now into nine to one. Bold enough is into eight to one. The one I liked, although since been tempered by John Catley next to you telling me it's going to be biblical <laughs> rain here tomorrow, was before midnight. Started the wins with two seasons and then uh, on good ground at Doncaster was second to Fernambula Civila, which is pretty decent form, but... Yeah, I'd be worried about too much rain come the uh, this late stage of the day tomorrow for before midnight. But um, five places each way, and Gaelic Coast and Bold Enough are being backed. Okay, there you go. Bold Enough is twelve to one, uh, and uh, as is Gaelic Coast. Uh, that's uh, that's the penultimate race. Then let's uh, rattle through the uh, the finale tomorrow at uh, at Aintree on day one of the uh, the national meeting, uh, and we close off day one. Uh, with a, a mare's uh, bumper here, uh, a, a grade two event with rosy red rum at four to one, surely been aimed at uh, at Aintree all year. Katira eleven to two, Ashro Diamond eleven to two, uh, Nautiness thirteen to two, Lady Excalibur nine to one, Law Ella ten to one, Iliad Allen at ten to one, Leading Theatre at fourteens, and bigger prices the rest here for this mare's bumper. Tom Siegel, what stood out for you in this closer? Yeah, like Laura Ella in this, uh, Ross, uh, good time when she won on her sole start last month. Gavin Cromwell can train winners anywhere. Royal Ascot, Ch uh, uh, Cheltenham Festivals, bringing her over. I like her. Aiden Tom's good booking. I thought she had a very good chance. So Laura Ella for me. Laura Ella it is then for Tom Siegel at 10 to 1. Uh, Mr Paul Keeley, did you have anything up your Yeah, no, I looked really, really hard at this and came down on Laura Ella. Um, for all the reasons that Tom just said. <laughs> <laughs> it's remarkable. Great minds. In other words, that. I neither know nor care what's going to win a bumper. I don't. I don't watch them. I don't. You know, I'm not going to pretend that I know all the form lines. But you know, Tom seemed to make a good case. That yeah. do me. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, uh, Paul Keeley uh, has uh, choked on the uh, the last one. Then um, David Stevens. Any offers? Any opinions? Any thoughts? Any feelings? Yeah, I'm really disappointed because I have got Laurella written down and have done since about three o'clock this afternoon. So. Um, we're going to be unanimous for one way or another. Uh, look, loads of unexposed, unexposed fillies and mares with ones by their name in this. And yeah, Gavin Cromwell, as Tom said, brilliant trainer. And I thought at the price is worth taking a punt on her. Four places each way. OK. Um, can, I, uh, can I request a, uh, a, an email to James Knight for a Fergal O'Brien to win the finale special? Yeah, but by all means, send James Knight an email about anything. Okay. Good to get him doing some work again. James.knight at gmail.com, I presume. Um, but uh, we'll see. Well, I didn't hear either of those things, but I'm sure they were, uh, they were fantastic additions to the show. Now, uh, we're going uh, to close things off uh, with uh, the, the Mayor's Bumper then. Uh, no uh, huge uh, opinions here. Gordon Mathers says, I love the nightlife. Uh, 100 to 1's five places. Uh, so 100 to 1's, 100 to 1. I've lost the ability to uh, to read. Uh, and Iliad Alain for Luke Salmon. Um, uh, don't listen to the tipsters, they're not good in bumpers, says Luke Salmon. Well, I'll have you know that Paul Keeley spends at least... Absolutely <laughs> spot on, Luke. Absolutely <laughs> spot on. Speak for yourself. <laughs> at least 30 seconds looking at it. Uh, but uh, there we go. Right, uh, that brings to a, a close of the show uh, for, for day one of uh, Aintree. But we can't go without, of course, getting the, the naps on day one. Uh, and uh, hopefully a winner or two. Uh, the nap of day one last year, Paul Keeley went in. What is the nap on day one this year? I'm going to go Dolos. Just think it's the wrong price. Dolos in the red is. ramp, four for we. Okay, Dolos is the wrong price, says Paul Keeley. Tom Siegel, what's the nap? Uh, Earn River in the first race for me. Earn River it is for uh, for Tom Siegel then. Uh, got the uh, the dog's approval. Uh, I will go with uh, Eldorado Allen then in the uh, the bowl, the race that no one else uh, wants a strong opinion. So my contrary nature is kicking in hopefully he can bounce back to that Newbury form and David Stevens. well there was a temptation to go for Law Ella in the bumper but I'll still go with something hopefully more likely Brazil in the juvenile hurdle 
Thank you very much. Uh, gentlemen, thanks ever so much for uh, for your contributions, of course. Paul Keeley, you're, you're not with us tomorrow. You're um, you're getting up early for the uh, the morning yeah, show? Yeah, I'm getting up early for the morning show, yeah. Okay. I'd rather be here. I'd like, roll in whenever I feel like it, can't I? But I've got, yeah. got, to, got to be here. About and you don't even seven have, tomorrow. Yeah, you don't even have to study the last one you do this show either. Uh, <laughs> so I just repeat everything I've said tonight, so it doesn't matter, does it? Don't have any homework to do. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we just get, uh, just get a hologram of Paul Keeley. It'd be a lot cheaper. Uh, and uh, Tom, you'll be back, of course. Yeah, I'll be sitting in this room, probably not in my Reading shirt, which I'm sure is getting lots of uh, uh, criticism on the uh, Twitter, but there we go. I don't know, I think it's my, one, of the, one of the better jumpers I've seen. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> David, Steve, the set. we'll see you tomorrow night as well. You certainly will, fresh from the race course, yeah. There you go, lovely stuff. Uh, and uh, I will see you back here at the same time, 6 o'clock, to preview day two of uh, Aintree as well. Uh, best of luck. I uh, hope you have a, a good start. Please gamble responsibly, of course. Uh, don't get too carried away uh, at Aintree uh, this, uh, this year. I'm sure plenty of people will be doing that on track for you. Uh, good night from us. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>